Okay, let's um, get to our geometry here. And we're just gonna. This is the part three for our tutorial. As the last part, uh, I went over the bomb map, attached my uh, VRA water, our procedural texture here to. Um, our, let, me, let me just clean up the things around here a little bit better. There it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I actually meant to clean it up, but uh, apparently I, I didn't. Let me just. <laughs> so, like this. Um, Alright. There it is. Much better. Alright. Um, let me just. Great. I don't think we clean up that much. Uh, I think. Oh, well. This doesn't get out of the way. We attach our um, uh, V-Ray procedural texture to a projection map and we attach it to blend color to bring down the value, the uh, scale, the wave scale value and we attach it to the bomb map. And we set our bomb multiplier to 0 0.005. Perfect. Now what we're going to go for is just simply shade our, since we, we do have a pretty good uh, waves over here as we check our waves movement and everything so I'm, I'm just gonna shade my uh, water here so you can simply go out and find a, a preset for the water and attach it and use that or instead you can just um, do it yourself here manually it doesn't take long so basically water doesn't have a diffuse color it's set to zero amount I'm, I'm gonna set to zero as well I'm gonna water is very reflective oh. and I'm gonna go down here the reflection it's not extremely too reflective I'm just gonna bring that to 0.9 and make sure to check the use for now and use interpolation and also max depth I'm gonna keep it to 3 and also for refraction yes very refractive okay and it's not too refractive again it's, it's not like crystal clear the water has a tiny bit of jitter over it so now I'm gonna go with 9.3 I think it looks better this way yeah and refraction IOR I'm gonna set to 1.3 for the water max depth to 3 and looks like we have a water here let's just render it out let's see if our water works it's probably gonna take a while since there um, there is a refraction and uh, it's super reflective so we render out right now Fantastic, we have a pretty decent waves over here. As you see, our spec uh, light um, scattering over over um, the waves here. We're getting pretty good result. Um, I think that would be it. It looks, it looks pretty good. If, if you want to add a bit of waves going over and like that, so what I would do for that kind of situation, I, I would do two things. Either I, I would have two V-ray water, um, and not two two V-ray water. Just keep it one. And with this V-ray water, I increase my um, wind magnitude to actually expand my waves here to create to create a larger waves, and increase my rate uh, rate and over here. So basically, um, this rate. Uh, a speed up the animation of on uh, floating waters on the surface. It doesn't speed up your animation on the direction. Th there's a difference between rate and wind uh, wind magnitude. So they're they're not the same. The wind magnitude pushes your waves in a direction, as you set it to, which is wind direction, and and the rate basically uh, speed up the floating waves on the surface. So that's what I would go for if I wanted to add some surface just going over the water at the edges. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to come down here, it, it looks pretty good right now, 
So I I'm gonna go for last thing, just adding caustics. So for caustics, we open up our global setting. We're gonna go under, um, just go back here under um, V-ray common, V-ray and indirect uh, illumination. I'm gonna check the GI global illumination. Once you check this uh, on default, the refractive caustics already checked. Make sure to uncheck that. Uh, to uncheck that. If if you check it on on default and just refractive caustics, you will get a very randomized caustics. It won't look um, as as uh, the caustic you would see in the water. It, it looks very randomized. It looks very uh, jittery. So. I would prefer to do something else. Instead of checking uh, this refractive caustic over here, I'm going to go at the bottom here, the caustics. I'm going to check this. So once I do that, that's all I needed to do. Once I do that, since I do have, a, uh, I do have two lights here, just a dome light and, and a point light. For my point light, um, I already added to um, use rotate shadow on default. Uh, I didn't add anything too crazy to it. But something else, I went to under attributes for the light. Under attributes, check light attributes for V-Ray. And it actually pops up a new attribute down here. Uh, extra V-Ray attributes. You can't play with a photon subdivisor or, or diffuse and multiplier. Any of these attributes down here to um, get the, the, the caustics you are looking for. But I think the default right now is pretty good for us since we have the jittery water here and it creates a the pretty randomized um, water and caustics for us. Let, let me just render out this part and show you the caustics. I'm gonna pause for a second until it actually uh, renders out. Okay, it looks like it is done. Uh, as you see, now we have our caustics in our scene. But it looks like a swimming pool right now. The fact is, um, depends on, on the lighting in your environment and, and if you're using a dome in your environment. It all affect actually your water here. And if you're basically just uh, using uh, like if, if you rather uh, the back side of your water start um, reflecting and, and actually um, it, it di actually dim distance once you check that it actually uh, darken underneath of your the water if I'm not mistaken uh, I, I can't actually remember but there is a um, there is an option called back base coloring might be under a uh, global setting but Either that, or you can actually check the uh, reflecting on back side. So that would probably help out. Let me, let me see if it's um, working here. Let me just check it one more time if I could. Okay. Fortunately, I, I do have a full, uh, actually, few frames rendered out with the motion of the water and everything. There is um, the water moving along the surface, uh, and they're, they're floating uh, over each other. Looks looks pretty decent to me. Looks like a pretty good water we are looking for. This is actually what I rendered out with the bomb map. I, I do have another version I rendered out with um, displacement map. I use a displacement map, and here it is. I kind of stretch my waves. The, the, um, the way I stretch my waves was um, going back to displacement map. Let me show you. Uh, right here on the V-ray, uh, the chopping multiplier. Once you increase that number, probably to two or three, it, there's some tiny black spots start showing up on your surface. That that. Uh, those black spots actually called surface acne, which you don't want on, uh, to appear on your surface. So 
So the lower value you go, it actually stretches your uh, waves a tiny bit. But the more you stretch your wave, um, the, your wave along the surface, uh, it actually start breaking up. So I would, uh, for my displacement in, in the um, animation over here, I, I just set it to one, not too high. I just said to want to show you how it actually stretches the waves here. Uh, so overall, I hope this uh, tutorial is actually useful to you. And if you have any questions, you can uh, drop it up in, in the comments uh, here. Uh, although, I actually, I, uh, before I forget, let, let me just open up one last thing here. So as you see um, right here in the V-Ray, I'm, I'm going to drop off this link, so this is uh, um, V-Ray, but it, it, this tutorial is for uh, 3D Max, it's just explaining about the displacement mapping and the difference between bomb map and displacement map. So for uh, the bomb map, uh, the, you get the same shadow as the original object, but with the displacement map, you know, your shadow um, definitely changes at the edges right here, and, and uh, if, if you like uh, uh, for the bomb map, your shadow stays the same. So uh, because the bomb map only applies uh, based it's based on your lighting, so it doesn't physically appear on, on your object. But displacement map actually uh, creates a new geometry with the displacement overhead. So uh, I'm actually gonna drop this off uh, in the description. If you like to take it and look at it, it would be great. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye.